What's going on guys, Stan here from Skateboard Strength and today we're talking knee pain for skaters, how to get rid of it and most importantly, how to not have it affect your skate time. So this will be a big one simply because of how much the knees take a brutal beating in the daily life of a skater and how many issues could be responsible for you experiencing knee pain, especially in skating. Skating is brutal on the knees and the simple act of bending or what we call knee flexion and straightening or what we call knee extension is basically involved in everything you're gonna do on a skateboard. Add to this the constant impact taken from bailing, landing tricks, and even simple things like pushing around it's no wonder skaters are always complaining about their knee pain. It's important to note that when talking knee pain, so much can go into affecting their perception of pain in and around the area, such as surrounding muscles, nerves and tendons. Even problems that happen further up and down the chain, such as at the hip and at the ankle joint, can cause the knee to have irritation or pain. Let's look at some examples. Instability at the hip can force the knee to kick out, forcing the knee to severely kick in as we go throughout our movements on the board like a push stride, causing irritation at the knee down the track. A lack of range of motion at the ankle can impede our ability to be able to send the knee forward as we go to set up for our pop phase or as we go to absorb loads. So what will happen is the knee will have nowhere to go and will have to again severely buckle in that can cause irritation down the track. Instability at the foot and ankle can again lead to instability at the knee which places the knee into a vulnerable position to again cause irritation. This is why when looking at knee pain, it's so important that we look at the bigger picture. We can begin to understand the system as a whole and the context of pain relative to the positions and movements that we need to express on the board. Another common problem skaters face with knee pain is finding solutions to immediately get them out of pain rather than fixing the cause and keeping them out of it. Often mobility work, stretching and foam rolling come under these temporary solutions. Leading the skaters return to the plank too soon, having the pain come back and then constantly looking for pain solutions. This is a flawed approach because it caps your skating at a level of potential. Because as your skate skills increase, so do the potential for forces being placed on the knee with faster and bigger impacts at the knee joint, which inevitably just ends you back in pain. So how do we deal with this properly? Your greatest pain reliever from skate-based pain will be to fill in the missing pieces of the puzzle. Mobility, stability, and strength. Developing these characteristics of movement will not only be your key to getting you out of pain, but to keeping you away from it. Most importantly, building strength off the board will allow you to take the forces that are being placed on the knee on the board. This lifts our ceiling for potential whilst minimizing our off-board training time and allowing us to upskill our on-board practices and skills pain-free. So let's get started. This program is split into three components. Mobility, this is how you get out of pain, allowing you to restore range of motion to the joint and to the surrounding muscles around the joint and allow you to skate pain-free again. Stability is where we explore these new ranges of motion as well as looking at how the effects of the ankle joint and the hip joint affect the knee and create stability as the system as a whole. Strength. This is where we eliminate knee pain for good. Building strength allows us to tolerate the forces that we're exposed to on the board and allow us to not continue to tighten up all the time. We're splitting the program up into two sections. Your mobility program can be formed every day or every other day you're not doing your strength and stability program. To loosen up the hamstrings, we're gonna grab our mobility ball and simply place it underneath our leg, like so as we're sitting down from there, shift your weight up over the ball. Now only apply as much pressure as you can tolerate and handle. You're just gonna work back and forth, up and down. And once you find a little kind of gnarly spot, I want you to sit on it to breathe and then flex and extend the knee back and forth for a couple of reps and then you continue to find different spots. We're gonna foam roll our ITB with the foam roller. So you're basically just gonna get the foam roller, place yourself on the ground like so, create a pivot point between your elbow and the foot to adjust how much weight you're placing on your leg. Remember, you don't wanna go so hard that you're in pain. You just wanna be able to breeze up and down, back and forth like so. And then once you've done a couple of reps like that, I want you to start close to the knee and we're simply gonna flex and extend the knee back and forth, work down a little bit more, and then again, flex and extend the knee, continuing all the way up to the start of your hip. We're then gonna apply the same principle to the front of the leg to do our quads. So again, back and forth, like so, for a few times, and then starting near the knee, and then again, flexing and extending 
the knee as you work your way up all the way to the top. And then finally, we're gonna go our adductors. So starting again close to the knee, allow yourself to turn out slightly and open up the leg to get that adductor and inside of the leg. And again, you're gonna roll up and down a few times back and forth. And then again, you're gonna start to flex and extend at the knee as you start to work your way up. For the couch stretch, you're basically gonna get a chair to put your back foot on. Make sure your front foot <clears throat> is comfortably underneath your knee and then that your back knee is underneath your hip. And from there, I want you to think about tucking your pelvis under and then pushing forward only as much as you can while still holding that pelvis tuck under. If you are overarching your lower back and just trying to send forward for the sake of it, you're getting the exercise wrong and you're not getting the benefits from it. So again, tuck the pelvis under, push forward with that hip and then hold in that position so you feel that stretch all the way in that front of that leg. The stability and strength program can be performed every second day. For your hip aeroplane, you basically gonna choose a leg to be the working leg. That's the leg that stays on the ground. From there, you kick the back leg up back nice and straight and from there it's this hip that needs to open up and close so don't worry about the back leg opening and closing so much keep it relatively straight from there that hip opens up and then closes all the way in get yourself nice uh, and close to a wall in case you need a bit of support because this will be hard at the start so you can go back and forth what's really important is the knee placement throughout this exercise so as you open up don't allow the knee to drift in for the sake of trying to open up the hip so if at the start you haven't got much range and you can only go to here, that's fine. Allow the strength to build up and the stability to build up for coming from the foot, knee and the hip, but don't sacrifice that knee position as a means of trying to open up excessively. For your step downs, you're basically gonna choose something that is of height. Now you can do this with a step, I've chosen my board or you can just stack up some books. From there, you're just basically gonna choose a leg that's gonna be your working leg. Next. I want you to think about trying to drive that knee forward as much as you can as you reach with the other foot and try and touch your heel on the ground. Control and then drive up, pushing back. So again, drive that knee forward as much as you can, touch and then come back. And again, all the way as far as you can. So fill out your range. At the start, you may only be able to get to here or you may only be able to kind of hover and then come back, that's fine. Allow yourself to build strength and stability at that knee, especially as the mobility work starts to set in and you get a bit more range of motion. Test how far you can start to go each time and as each session continues. Again, when we do this, knee placement is gonna be really important. Don't try and kick the foot forward if it means you are like severely driving your hip out to the side or if the knee is severely buckling in to do so. You wanna make sure that knee is trekking over the foot over the toe and then coming back. We now have two exercises back to back. The first one's gonna be the tib anterior raise. We're basically trying to challenge the front of the shins. So you're basically just gonna set yourself up with your shoulders on the wall like so, creating a nice straight plank and it's just your shoulders on the wall. From there, getting yourself elevated like on, from your heels, getting your toes elevated. You're gonna bring the toes down towards the ground and then drive them all the way up, hard as you can, up towards your shin, come down and up for your repetitions. For the hamstring curl pulse, so basically you're gonna set yourself up with a foam roller. You can actually even use your skateboard for this if you don't have a foam roller at home. Choose the end of your, basically just the end of your foot. Majority wants to be just your toes on the roller. From there, I'm gonna get you to come back, laying back, tuck your pelvis under, bridge your hip up like so, having the other leg up in the air, and then you're gonna drive the heel up towards the ceiling. So really big drive, and then you're just gonna hold in that position. Don't allow that heel to start dropping down. To make this easier, bring the foot closer to your bum to make it harder, drive it further away. If it's really hard to do the single leg version, start with both feet on and then driving your heels and simply hold in this position. We're now at the stage where we need to choose a lunge variation. Now, because everyone's gonna have varying levels and different levels of pain, it's gonna be really impossible to choose one lunge variation that's gonna suit everyone across the board. Also, it doesn't leave us a runway for progression. So for those that are at a certain lunge level, it won't allow you to progress and continue to progress to the point where you build up strength in the lunge pattern that will allow you to transfer over the board and continue to lift your ceiling for potential. So what I want you to do is click the link in the comment section and go and figure out which lunge is gonna be right for you using the progression regression line at the Skateboard Strength Instagram page. This now becomes your lunge variation that you insert in the D exercise. What I will go into here is just a couple of cues and tips around lunging and how we can be really effective with it, especially when we're trying to get out of pain. 
When you initially start to lunge, especially if you have pain at the knee, there might be some discomfort. So it's about figuring out which knee variation or which lunge variation is gonna be right for you. One of the biggest things you can do whilst introducing lunging pattern with pain at the knee is reduce your range of motion in what we call ankle dorsiflexion or knee going over the toe. So at the start, you may just kind of want to keep a relatively straight uh, ankle knee line, right? And think about dropping straight down rather than sending that knee forward. Now, as the mobility um, starts to increase in the knee and you get less and less pain, I want you to push that range of motion. As skaters, we can't afford to keep ourselves safe in terms of keeping that knee over that ankle line all the time because in skating, it's gonna get called upon for our knee to go over our toe. Not only that, we want to build strength and stability in these positions. So, if you start, you may even need some support from say like a skateboard or a foam roller, whatever it is, to get yourself into a nice lunge position and take some of the load away from the knee as it starts to get stronger and as the mobility work starts to set in. But as you get more advanced, start pushing that range of motion of you pushing that knee forward over that toe as much as you safely can. Play around with that range of motion and explore that range of motion here in a safe and controlled environment. So when it gets called upon when you're skating, you have the strength and stability at that knee joint to be able to use. For your hamstring variations, I want you to basically choose a variation of this exercise that works for you. So basically we're gonna start with the two leg in hamstring curl with the foam roller. So driving in, slow and control on the way back. Make sure you're driving your hips up towards the ceiling. If that's too easy, then you can go to the two in, one out. So two in, leg comes up and then one out for the movement. Or from there, your progression is to then go into the single leg drive, come back, slow and control for the reps required. So the final step we're looking at is the hop variations. And again here, it's a choose your own adventure. I'll link up in the comments section as a way for you to be able to see the differences in terms of the single leg hop, the double and the third. But let's go over some important technique work here in terms of choosing the right hop for you. When we choose our hop variations, you basically wanna be able to hop, land and stick and work on the mechanics of what's happening from the foot, the knee and the hip all together. So as you land, you wanna stop dead straight and you wanna minimize the extra movements going side to side or resisting the urge to go that second little adjustment. Okay, so don't think about going really big for the sake of going big. Start small in your hop, display control. Again, make sure you're not allowing your hip to kick out, the knee to kick in, display control. And then you go into the next one for your single hops. The doubles, again, it's that second stick that you want. So that first one, stick for the landing. That's your double hop. And now your triple hop will be that one, two, three, and again, stick that landing. So you have an option of the single, the double, or the triple, depending on what your level's at. But remember, before you scale up, make sure you can display the qualities required or the qualities that we're after out of those hops in order to strengthen up the foot, calf and ankle, the knee and the hip joint together and teach it how to absorb load properly. And that's it. Just remember, if you've gotten to the point where you feel acute knee pain, it's most likely taking a long time for you to get to this point. It didn't happen overnight and so the solutions aren't gonna happen overnight either. In the initial stages, the more you can consistently perform this program, the quicker the result will be. So hang in there and don't get impatient. Hopefully this program can now be your roadmap to not only getting you out of knee pain, but most importantly, keeping you out of knee pain. Making your sessions knee pain free so that you can enjoy them. And most importantly, extending the life of the knees so that you can continue shredding for a long time. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for future videos coming out. And if you have any homies that are having knee pain when they skate, be sure to share this with them.